<laughs> so, hello everyone, I'm Corinne. I'm a master's student currently at L'École de Technologie Supérieure here in Canada in Montreal. Um, so, for those of you who might have seen the uh, student competition at ACM uh, at Models last year, um, this is almost exactly the same presentation. I am sorry about that. So, those of you can go do something else and grab more coffee. Um, so, for those of us who don't know, like what I'm doing here is a model driven approach to justifying continuous integration pipelines. I am working mostly on um, DevOps and DevOps is, as most of you know, a software development methodology that aims to merge development uh, and operations. So uh, the goal is to actually build quality into each stage of the, of the development process. Um, and this is very nice and all, but we have a problem in the industry right now where um, most developers, well, some developers at least, will go uh, about the, um, the the following statements and say, well, I'm a developer and I implemented a CICD pipeline, so a continuous integration or deployment or release or development, whichever you want to call it. Um, and then from there, we'll infer that. So, of course, they are doing DevOps because a lot of people have uh, equa equated pipelines with DevOps, which but there's a lot more to DevOps, actually. And so obviously, since I'm doing DevOps, then, of course, my software quality is excellent since DevOps has been related to uh, higher quality in software. Um, but actually, it's a bit of a that's a bit of a, a shortcut here because uh, first of all it's not because you're using a pipeline that you're doing devops and it's not because you're doing devops that your software quality is excellent so we realized that there that very little has been done to evaluate the quality of the pipeline itself um, we are currently working on systematic literature review uh, on this exact subject so we hope to have it out by uh, next summer but um, from a from a very um, high level perspective, it not a lot has been done to actually look at pipelines quality. Um, we could go about and take the quantitative approach uh, where we try to measure actually, I go back, where we try to measure actually uh, what would be quality inside one component of the pipeline and then try to quantify it for every step of the pipeline. Um, but that's problematic because there is actually no one quality in DevOps. Uh, every pipeline, every project is different and within reason because DevOps is actually about having the programmers and developers being able to create their own tools to uh, work the best way in the most efficient way possible. So since there is no one quality in DevOps, we can actually compare pipelines with the same metrics. So we decided that instead of going with that quantitative quantitative approach, we're going with a qualitative approach where we can demonstrate that each pipeline modification adds value to it, then we're in fact uh, justifying the resulting pipeline. So we start with one pipeline that could be very uh, basic and then from there on, every time we increment that pipeline, if we can justify exactly why we made that change, on that case, the resulting pipeline will at least be coherent. Um, so, how do we go about this? <laughs> well, first of all, how do we uh, modelize uh, justification? Uh, there was uh, some work that was done by uh, Thomas Podasek um, in 2018 that was about what they called uh, uh, justification diagrams, but they were actually for, in that case, uh, intended for accreditation and certification, uh, but they nonetheless are a compre comprehensive notation to explain why a result is trustable. So um, in gray at the top, you always have a conclusion. That is the uh, the point that you're trying to put across. This is what you're trying to prove. That conclusion will be supported by a strategy in green, and that strategy is just a way of going about your argument. What do I need to demonstrate or prove or show that will uh, support this conclusion? Um, there can be a hierarchy of strategies which are based on other sub-conclusions in white, uh, which are um, other pieces of proof that we need to validate a strategy that will eventually validate the uh, 
utmost conclusion. And eventually we can have as many sub conclusions and uh, strategies as we want. But those ultimate strategies at the bottom will be uh, supported by supports in blue and supports are um, piece of evidence that you can show actually. So they can be logs, they can be uh, pro uh, source codes, they can be uh, artifacts, anything that is producible in front of a uh, an accreditation board. But how do we go from justification diagrams to justification diagrams in DevOps? So the goal here would be to create a comprehensive timeline to justify every step of evolution. So we could have a first version and then explain why we had a second version and then the third and the fourth and so forth. So uh, we wanted to validate this experience, of course. Uh, so we always started by uh, extracting the pipeline version history from Git. Um, and then we would do a uh, text to model transformation to parse the YAML files and create an abstract representation of the pipeline. So we would do uh, a text to model transformation. Uh, then we would compare the models to try which components were changed and then trans translate those uh, local modification to the semantic domain of justification. So instead of having a git diff, we would actually have a um, uh, a, a natural language uh, sentence that would tell us exactly what has been changed. And eventually we'd go into creating a justification diagram for that, that specific version of the program and then validate uh, the sort of retro engineering that we just did with the development team. Uh, we tested this on several open sources projects, uh, namely uh, Blitz, which is a uh, framework that uh, is a full stack framework that automatically generates some boilerplate code. We have also Visual Studio Code, a general purpose interactive uh, IDE, <laughs> and uh, also Home Assistant, which is an IoT app for iOS and Android. Those are three open source and accessible public uh, projects on uh, GitHub right now. Um, so, I said we started by extracting the pipeline version's history from Git. So, we just do a Git log fancy bash script, and then we have all the versions, all the YAML files that describe the pipelines. From there on, what we need to do is transform those to a model, and we created a model that is right now compatible with GitLab and GitHub. Um, the pipeline, well, the mod meta model was actually very heavily influenced by GitHub Actions because this is the first use cases that we use, but we think it will be uh, eventually uh, Appliable to other platforms also. So we also had, uh, we're working right now on a Jenkins uh, adaptation right now. Um, yes, so for the meta model, uh, we realized that most pipelines are usually a, a series of jobs that are separated into steps, and those uh, steps are uh, mostly commands that are passed uh, on the bash uh, terminal. Usually they're commands that are very straightforward. Um, in the GitHub Actions uh, scenario, there's a little bit more to that. They have some uh, commands that are pre-made into uh, what they call GitHub Actions, and we need to call those actions instead, but they're still exactly the same principle as the commands. And also the pipeline needs to be uh, triggered at some point. So if you want to have an automation that just launches the pipeline anytime we need it to without having to manually go and trigger it, then we can have some events and activities and branches. And those events, activities and branches are all part of the uh, Git nomenclature. So if you're using Git, this will be compatible, but we'll see more eventually when the Jenkins integration is done. Um, so for the validation, we actually tried to uh, have those semantics come out. So we just made uh, a very quick <laughs> calculation of how many changes we would find in every uh, pipeline and how many semantic, well, natural language ex explanation we could find from them. So for most of them, it was pretty outstanding at just uh, extracting one natural language sentence that would explain what we change instead of having to look on and on at the good diff. And we had like a very outstanding accuracy rate, which we're very proud of. Uh, most of the changes that we could not explain were some refactoring, some reordering, 
um, or uh, changes to internal components that were made inside the uh, the, the actions they, themselves, because we function with them as black boxes. But we could we could still uh, see changes parameters or versions. Um, so for the use case, I'm going to use a Blitz just to show you how we went about this. So when we started with the Blitz pipeline, uh, Blitz had a first version of the pipeline that was very, very simple. We were uh, just going about to uh, check the functionality of the program. So we had two um, stage, uh, two jobs actually that were simply building the project and then running the test. And that was it. Since what we're trying to prove here is the, the project quality, then what we put as a conclusion at the top was the project quality was validated. This is our goal ultimately. And this was uh, supported by the strategy that is assess the project quality, which is a strategy for it. Um, so of course, in this case, like I said, we were just working with the functionality of the project. So our some conclusion was to prove that to support quality, we're going to prove the functionality of the project. And to prove the functionality of the project, then we have to show that it builds and then that it passes the test. So that was very bare bone from the start. That was it for the first version. Then they made a change uh, from version one to version two, where they uh, made a change where they added, instead of having a, triggered, uh, a trigger only on the push action, they had it on the pull request. So uh, the semantic that we extracted from that was the, was the sentence at the, at the bottom of the slide, which is event pull request was added to the triggers. So instead of looking at, we can see here an example of how instead of looking at the git diff every time, then in that case, we could just have a sentence and not have to go back and uh, mine the uh, git repo all the time for information. Um, so what did this... Uh, what does this prove to us? Why do we need to add the pull request to the triggers? We uh, stated, and this is where the manual part the manual part comes in. This is the end of the automation. We stated that when we create this um, justification diagram, we stated that when we added the pull request as triggers, then what we want to do actually here is encourage public engagement. That's the part of the tree you can see on the left, um, where we try to eliminate as most as as much of the friction as we can to have people participate into the project. So when we want to have a uh, pull request triggering, then we know that we don't need to make a pull request part of the project before it is tested. And so we can know from there on that it is better. Well, you know, it works easier. So we may we put down the uh, pipeline is launched for pull request support completely on the left. And that was what we just demonstrated, but we could recognize that having the Git repository as public would be also a proof of, the, of this strategy here. So then they made another change uh, and here they added branches. So instead of having pushes and pull requests triggering the pipeline, then we would have only the pushes and the pull requests made on two branches that would trigger the pipeline. So what we, and once again, you can see down there the natural explanation and natural language explanation. Um, from there on, what we're saying is that uh, we wanted to actually manage resources efficiently, which is also a mark to us of uh, quality. Um, and same thing you can see in the branch in the middle that that's where we're trying to uh, add to the uh, justification diagram and see how it goes on and on. And it still proves our point of project quality. Um, then again, for V3 to V4, they uh, actually ha added the step that was called build blitz packages, and it was added to the job to build and test. So what we were doing here was instead of having only, and we can see here at the bottom right, I don't know if you can see my uh, mouse here, uh, but at the bottom right, we, add, we had only three supports that were supporting the testing and running of the project. Uh, strategies, but here we can see that we added a third one, which was on completely on the left on the bottom right side, which is build blitz packages, which was helping to test the building of the project. But this is where it becomes really interesting because in the next version, the version five, they actually rolled back those changes. So they d deleted exactly what they just had created. And 
that is super interesting because to us, even though we just deleted the, um, the, 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 the support that was just added, here what we did is, of course, we took out that support from the diagram. But now we realize that those build blitz packages were actually re redundant because uh, you could see that they were actually calling a step that was building the project. And then they were calling another step that was building and testing. So they realized that we were actually building the project twice, which was uh, not so not so efficient. So they took it back. But then we could realize that the step, the redundant step that was already there, the blitz package test, was actually now contributing to the resource consumption uh, and to see that the project manages resources efficiently. So we can see that even when we have a step that is taken out, we can actually make sense of it and uh, prove that we can actually add to our uh, justification diagram. Um, so we presented this uh, this uh, use case to the founder of uh, the Blitz uh, the Libris project, which is the principal repo maintainer. And uh, he said that out of those examples I just show you, four out of five were exactly spot on and one was pretty close. So we are really happy about this. Uh, for, yeah. <laughs> so in summary, we um, propose a functioning automation of text to model transformation and model comparison, which is all automated, like I said. Um, we realize that semantics are extractable from a pipeline's version history and uh, that justification diagrams extracted semantically proved to be a very suitable tool to express motive and uh, to explain something that would otherwise be a few lines of deleted in a GIF diff log. So to uh, move forward, we are doing right now a larger scale validation at Calum, uh, which uh, they have a template pipeline and variations of the same pipeline with uh, between dev teams. So they have six years worth of history and we will have direct access to engineers. So the validation will be much easier to do and much more <laughs> faster than what we did. And also there is, we are currently working on research on justification patterns, just to see if we can kind of automate some part of creating the justification diagrams so that we can maybe rely a little bit less on the intelligence and the, 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 subjectivity, the subjectivity of these researchers, in this case me. And that is this for me. 